Hello everyone. Today in this topic we will going to talk about an African nation Zambia. If you see the map of Africa, then you will going to find Zambia as a landlocked country. It shares border with Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia and Angola. But the question is why this country is in the news? Because Zambia became the first country of Africa who received 1.3 billion dollar loan from International Monetary Fund after COVID-19 pandemic. They needed that loan because Zambia became the first country to default in the pandemic following what the fund called years of fiscal profligacy. The country's debt quadrupled between 2014 and 2019 because the former president Edward Lungu borrowed huge amount of money from China for so-called infrastructure development. You will be stunned to know the size of the Zambian economy and the amount they borrowed from the different lenders. The size of the Zambia's economy is only 25 billion dollar in nominal term and their debt is 17 billion dollar. So you can clearly see the debt to the GDP ratio which is more than 50%. That is very unhealthy for an economy like Zambian economy. Among this unsustainable loan amount, the China share is almost 30%. And this 30 percent is equivalent to six billion dollar. Not only the Chinese loans, Zambia also owes three billion dollar euro bonds to various external lenders. Because of that, Zambia is asking for more than eight billion dollar of relief on the debt to the Chinese lender, private bond holders, and the other creditors. If China would agree to give Zambia some relief on debt, then they have to restructure their loan amount. As a consequence of that, the Chinese have to absorb some losses. Anyway. These decisions are on the Chinese counterpart. But Zambia took some important decision to go away from the Chinese lenders. They are doing so by cancelling the Chinese projects in Zambia. Zambia has specifically stated that it will completely cancel 12 planned projects. Among those 12, half of which were expected to be funded by Chinese Exim Bank, along with one by ICBC for a university and another by Jiangxi Corporation for a dual highway from capital Lusaka. Additionally, the government cancelled 20 of the unpaid loan sums, some of which were for the brand new projects and the others were for the ongoing ones. Such cancellations are not unusual for Zambia, but majority of these loans came from the Chinese partners and the Chinese lenders. The 10 of the cancelled loans are from the Chinese Exim banks, which helped Zambia to save $1.1 billion. Three from ICBC. The total cost of those loans were $303 million. Another from Jiangxi banks of $157 million. The remaining six undistributed loan balances come from predominantly from commercial lenders, equating to $483 million. Now I am going to give you some information about Zambia's natural resources. After knowing that you will fall out of sky. Because a country with that much of natural resources cannot possibly be that poor. But their country really is dwindling in economical front. Zambia has a wide range of natural resources that includes copper, cobalt, silver, uranium, lead, coal, zinc, gold and emerald. In fact, it is one of the main producers of semi-precious gemstone and cobalt in the world. This country is also recognized internationally as a major producer of tourmaline, amethyst and aquamarine. And the most interesting fact about the Zambia is, this country is the fourth largest copper producer of the world and the holds about 6% of the global copper resources. Not only this, Zambia is home to the abundant wildlife, lakes and rivers. The mining industry has been the country's main economical backbone, especially mining and refining of copper. But after the arriving of new president Hakindi Hichilema, who took office a year ago, spearheaded the negotiation with Zambia's creditors, which include France, UK and China. Under his precedence, inflation has fallen to a single digit and the country's currency has regained some of its value. But the country is still due to receive an immediate payment of $185 million from IMF. And they will going to receive it after all the negotiation will be completed by the IMF and the Zambian presidency. The Zambia is getting the loan from the IMF. That doesn't mean they do not have to pay their loan back. They have to pay it back because they are not enjoying the luxury of being a Pakistan who is American stooge. And because of the IMF pressure, China has taken a backseat as a development partner of Zambia. As you are seeing, the IMF put the pressure on the Zambia to cancel the Chinese projects. But the IMF is allowing other organizations to run the projects in Zambia. Like, IMF allows 62 concessional loan projects to continue with 12 different lenders. 
most of which are administered by multiple institutions and again involve in recurrent expenditures rather than infrastructure focused projects. Next, the Zambian government will continue with 22 World Bank projects, the majority of which focused on the social program. Also, African Development Bank comes second with the 16 projects. These projects are all social and the infrastructure initiative allowed by IMF. By the way, Chinese have still managed to get permissions from the Zambian government in two projects regarding water, sanitation and roads through the African Growing Together Fund. The African Growing Together Fund is a fund co-chaired by the China and African Development Fund. But Zambia did not move away from the Chinese projects totally. The Zambia's PPP policy had seen some projects such as the previously Chinese loan-based 750 megawatt Kafu George Hydroelectric Power Station. But in my view, Zambia should move away from the Chinese projects totally. They are witnessing today's Pakistan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. They are all sinking because of the Chinese debt policy. They gave the loan to the nations those who are economically vulnerable. They know this nation will fail to pay the loan back. In return of the loan, they grab the resources or strategically important ports or airports of any nation. The examples are Pakistan, Gwadar and Sri Lanka's Hambantota. Zambia is a very poor country. 77% of its population do not have access to the clean drinking water. 60% do not have access to electricity. 46% do not have access to internet. So they have to improve the public life first by promoting education and the technical training. Then they should go for the expensive infrastructure projects. Now our today's questions. The first question is, which city is the host of the Global Clean Energy Action Forum? The first option is New Delhi. Second option is Petersburg. Third option is Paris. Fourth option is Rome. The second question is, as of 2022, which country is the largest bilateral lender to the Sri Lanka? The first option is China. Second option is India. Third option is Australia. Fourth option is USA. So this is the end of the topic. I hope you will going to find this topic informative. If you have any question or any kind of inquiry, then please contact me through my email address which is tuhin.power.academy at the Thank you very much. Thank you for your support.